Hey guys, welcome to the Fastlane Now. Today we are talking about vehicles that had to be redesigned midway through your product cycle because People didn't like them or they were just a little bit, let's be real, ugly. So this list comes to us from Autoblog originally, so thank you to our friends over there. And we've tweaked it and changed it around a little bit, but let's get right into our emergency facelift lift. Yeah, our, our, our emergency our, facelift face lift. lift. There we go. <laughs> Number eight on our list is actually a really recent car. It's kind of what inspired this list in the first place, and that is the 2019 Chevy Camaro. When this design came out, it was met with, I think, some mixed response. Uh, and then at SEMA, Chevy showed a little teaser where they actually updated that styling. And then for 2020, Chevy just released a brand new model that basically has what they did from the SEMA show. So all they really did, Tommy, is they took the Chevy badge, the little bow tie, and they moved it from sort of that plastic trim piece into the grill and it completely fixed the design. Yeah, I don't know why they put that little bow tie so far down, but it made the whole car look kind of goofy and yeah, a little bit weird. A little bit awkward. But now with the new one, you know, they're back on stride. People really didn't like the first gen the first iteration of this design. Yeah. Although I bet in like 40 years when people are collecting this generation this, of the, the The 19 will be the one to have because it, it's more uh, special somehow. Yeah, it's gonna be like more rare. Number seven on the list, Tommy, is the Pontiac Aztec. This design came out in the year 2000, the turn of the millennium. Uh, and well, a lot of people think this might be one of the ugliest cars ever made. So much so that Pontiac decided to redesign it for 2002. And by redesign it, what I mean is they just painted some of those black plastic bumpers body color. Now we'll go back and forth on this till the crows fly in. Oh yeah, we will. But I actually kind of like the design of the Aztec and when it came out in 2001, people kind of lost it. Now the reason that it looks like this, just so we're aware, is because GM was really criticized throughout the 90s of being kind of stodgy and, yeah. and you know, unable to really go crazy with their designs. So with the Aztec, Tom Peters, who actually designed the C7 Corvette, yep. really went nuts with this car. He was one of the, the, the gentlemen that worked on the <laughs> team. Did. And he just went, you know, full crazy with this sport utility vehicle. So in 2001, it came out and it had that really unique double headlight turn signal design, but it also had this black plastic cladding down the entire side of the vehicle. Yeah. Kind of like some of the older Jeeps did that too for a while. And it had, you know, big old plastic bumpers front and back. You know, it looked pretty outdoorsy, but people really didn't like it. All right, number six on our list, Tommy, is the 2002 BMW 7 Series. Uh, and it's actually a number of BMW models from this time frame. Uh, they had a designer whose last name was Bangle, and these are referred to as the Bangle Butt BMWs uh, because they had this really goofy back end design where the trunk, it, it almost looks like you have a miniature car stuck inside a bigger car, like the way these two shapes kind of interact. Yeah. Uh, and it didn't look very good. So in 2006, they came and they redesigned the back end to make it just a little bit more clean, I guess. They, they really just had to clean up the back end. So Chris Bangle really brought in a whole new era of styling for BMW. Yeah. Um, and kind of the pinnacle of that, in my opinion, was the, the transition between the, uh, you know, the really boxy square yeah. 5 Series. And the much more rounded, yeah. curvy shape. Um, and it was a really cool design, but with the 7 Series, people really didn't like the, especially the back. Oh, gosh. You know, BMWs were super conservative for you know, the first 40 years of their existence, yeah. pretty much. And then when Chris Bangle came in and gave it this weird swoopy tail, people kind of lost it. And I do agree, it's kind of hideous. It's just not a good looking back end. And the one that they fixed it with looks much better. Uh, okay, let's keep moving on. Number five on our list is the Subaru Tribeca. This came out in 2005 with this really funky three grill front end. Like it had the centerpiece and then these two flan. It looked like a weird Frenchman's mustache, kind of. Uh, and obviously it was met with some resistance from buyers. And so in 2007, Subaru updated it with a much more uh, traditional full length grill. It, it, it looked much more bland actually compared to the original one, but to some people's eyes a lot better yeah. than the original one looked. And we should explain, you know, if a product life cycle for a model is, I don't know, let's say eight years, right? Yeah. Um, typically there'll be uh, like a, a refresh four years in. And a lot of these vehicles refresh either came one year or even two years in. So right. these were kind of, you know, disaster control efforts. Faster and, than normal refreshes. Right, right. Yeah. And the Tribeca was, hideous in my opinion beforehand. Not a good looking vehicle. Um, it looks a lot like an Edsel. Yes you know? it does. Yeah with that big center grill and then these two weird little right. like, it's just, uh, it, yeah it is like a mustache isn't it? Yeah it looks it's like a 
well, if it was 1959, it would look like an Oldsmobile sucking a lemon. <laughs> um, but when they refreshed it, you know, they really smoothed it out. And yeah. a lot of these designs went from pretty crazy outlandish to more conservative. Very and we see that as a trend where, yeah. you know, the Aztec was, wow, oh, and then it was, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, exactly. And the same thing with the Tribeca. It was like, what the heck is that to, oh, it's a giant three-row Subaru. That's what it is. Uh, which is a much more calm design. <laughs> but next up on our list is uh, number four, the 2014 Jeep Cherokee. I'm sure a lot of you guys were expecting this to show up on this list. And this design was very controversial when it first came out, Tommy, right? It had the split headlight design. So the running lights were up top, and then you had the actual bulb down below that looked like it should have been a fog light or something like that, but that was actually the headlight. Uh, and then in 2019, this last model year, Jeep decided to ditch this design and go for a much more traditional looking Jeep Cherokee. Uh, you have all the headlights kind of collected in one spot rather than split between these two different levels. So it took them a couple of years. It did. And actually the kind of the story why people hated this design so much is even before it was shown at the auto show, um, someone snapped a really unflattering picture of it in like a warehouse. And it was yeah. like poorly lit and it just wasn't a good angle on the thing. And that got leaked online and people just lost it. So when it you know, was officially revealed, um, it, it was met with a lot of kind of disdain, I think. But yeah. actually, I, I like the original Cherokee design way more than the updated version. I'm with you. You know, this is one of the few ones on this list that I think that the original one, the one that was emergency facelifted, actually kind of looks better. You know, the Hyundai Kona now kind of takes this sort of design from the uh, from the, the previous generation Cherokee, and I think it's a good look. It's a really good look, and the new, I think it's, uh, what is it, the, um, the, the little tiny Hyundai? The oh. Uh, senior machismo. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, know, um, I know what you're talking the, about. Uh, Zach, what's the tiny Hyundai? The venue. The venue. The venue has it, yes. Yes. yes the venue. So somewhat similar to the venue. Yeah, it does look a little bit like the venue. And, yeah. you know, it's not that the new one looks bad. I mean, it still looks fine. fine. Uh, but the last one was just a little more characterful, a little more interesting. Right. Uh, okay, let's keep moving on. Number three on our list is actually a very recent vehicle. It's the Toyota Prius. Uh, and the facelift isn't that drastic. It was just, like, very angular in the front. There's a lot of shapes going on, a lot of angles, and what they did... It was a did, bold move, is it, what they did. It was did. a bold move. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. And what they did for 2019 is they just kind of smoothed it out. They mellowed it out a little bit. A few less crazy lines going on in the front end. Uh, and I don't know if it looks better or worse. That's for you guys to decide, but... Maybe it was because the people that were buying the Prius weren't expecting this crazy angular you know, spaceship looking car. They, they wanted, wanted something, something a little more understated. Yeah. yeah, so with the new one, they've really toned it down. They've really accentuated the Luigi mustache. Yes, they have brought the, the this has another mustache, doesn't it? The spear on the um, uh, headlights. Yeah, the spear is the little, the thing that drops off the bottom of the headlight dick down here, that's gone. <laughs> But anyways, but it, the headlight is different. Yeah, the headlight is really different. And then they also tamed down the rear end a little bit too. Yeah, so they did. A lot more traditional. Uh, which, you know, it's fine. Um, number two on our list is one that I thought uh, Autoblog missed on their list. No offense to Autoblog. But uh, they mentioned an earlier WRX. I want to mention this generation WRX because the 2008 Subaru WRX is referred to in the Subaru community as the narrow body WRX. And when you pull up a picture of it, you can see exactly why it's called the narrow body. It's because it doesn't have the same fender flares that they went ahead and put on it one year later. So here, here's the 08, right? Yeah. And it, it it's kind of fleet sided. It still has the hood scoop that tells you it's a WRX and the badges, of course. Um, but it's it's just missing the flares. Uh, it, it, does, it doesn't look the part that I think a WRX should, which is, you know, this kind of wide body, aggressive stanced vehicle. Well, and if I recall, like, 08 was a particularly kind of poor year. I think it was like way down in power. It was way less powerful. It only had, you can always see an 08, tell an 08 WRX because it has one exhaust tip. Yes, one exhaust tip. <laughs> it doesn't have the quad exhaust tips, which I don't know why they did that. It literally just looks like someone put a hood scoop on an Impreza. It's exactly what it looks like. The wheels aren't all that interesting either. I mean, it's like, it's just the most boring looking WRX you could possibly buy, not to mention it's slower than the other ones too. Uh, so if you're going to buy a Subaru WRX, I recommend against buying the 08, unless you like that body style. Then buy an 08. Then buy an 08 because they're significantly less desirable than any of the other model years, I can assure you of that. All right, last but not least, Tommy, number one on our list, uh, maybe a lot of you guys expected this one too, it's the 2012 Honda Civic. So this Civic 
came out and it was kind of a disaster when it first uh, hit the streets. Uh, the design wasn't all that great, but more than that, it was just kind of a giant heap of plastic. Yeah, people did not like the 2012 Civic, so they, they changed it for 13. Yep. They, you know, they kind of re-sculpted the front end a lot. And 2012 is another kind of like a dark year in the Civic lineup. Yeah. Um, a lot of people consider it just, it, it didn't have the, 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 the right style, the right flair of, of what a Civic should be. Not quite. So in 13, they kind of redid it and then it became great again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of these cars, they weren't all that different mechanically from year to year. Right. You know, but yeah. it was just, it was just people who did not like or, or for whatever reason, the, the, the body style that they offered was not working with the time that it came out in. Yeah, you know, I think the reason for that, Tommy, is that like a lot of people, when they go and buy a car, one of the first things you see is how it looks, right? Mm -hmm. And if you walk up to a vehicle and it doesn't look very good, it's just not going to attract that many buyers. Now, there's exceptions to that, of course, but and a lot of people base their purchase decision based off of many more things than just looks. Right. Uh, but it's it's a big factor. Well, and it's I think, an emotional decision yeah, buying exactly, a car, right? Yeah. And I, I will say, I think if they came out with that 2002 plus Aztec right now, people wouldn't mind it as much as they did in 2001 or 2002. Yeah, actually, that Aztec kind of has the same split headlight design that the Cherokee does, that the Kona does. I think now that would work a lot better than it did when it first came out. No, absolutely. Well, guys, as always, let us know what you think in the comments below. Yeah, if there's any emergency redesigns you think should have been on this list, please let us know what they are. Uh, and be sure to come back to tflcar.com for the latest news, views, real-world reviews, and more fun top lists just like this one. We'll see you guys next time.